on from something that a few weirdos at the fringes of society were saying in the 1960s to fairly mainstream stuff right now. And you can hardly walk past a newsstand these days without seeing some magazine at least each week dealing with some issue of sustainability, uh, some issue of resources that we're overusing. It's not just the business magazines, it's the glossy magazines as well that are picking these up. You'll also discover that the magazines are now, I think, taking the correct approach. It's not just about, the polar bears are drowning, although that's important. It's also about saying there are opportunities. In every crisis, in every change in situation, there is always an opportunity. And so I come at this issue from a business opportunities perspective. What are the opportunities here for us? How should we respond? I am a capitalist. I've got no problem saying that, standing up and saying that. I think certain versions of capitalism are under strain and need to be corrected. But I spend my time helping companies to do what they do better and to help them make profits. I'm not standing here as a registered Greenpeace member, although there would be nothing wrong with that. I'm not standing here, I don't wear Hessian underwear. I don't go hugging trees on weekends. Um, I'm here not to ask you to be nice, although it's nice to be nice. I'm here suggesting that there is a huge business opportunity. That by looking at these issues, you can sustain your business's profitability. It may take some adjustments, but it doesn't mean giving all your money away and becoming a voluntary organization. I do believe, though, that sustainability needs to be at the heart of our strategies so that we can get those business opportunities going forward. So what I want to do is three things, very briefly, to identify the problem, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Then secondly, give you a four-step model that you can use to think sustainably and act sustainably. And I think you can use that at, at a national level, at a company level, for your team. And hey, if the company's not going to jump on board immediately, your team can still start doing this. Also hope you can use that four-step model in your own homes. And then finally, I want to give you eight reasons why you should do it. I'm not going to start with those eight reasons, but I think they're eight very important and imperative reasons to do it. That's what we're going to do with our time together. So firstly, the problem. I'm going to focus in, as I said, on this issue of energy, because it's the big thing that catches all the headlines, and we do know that we are in a crisis. I mean, the weather has gone nuts. That's the headline, isn't it? Climate change is one of the issues that is a direct result of global warming, and the weather isn't like we remember it when we were kids. That is true anywhere in the world. No one disagrees with this fact. The media love to say that there's a whole lot of debate raging. We're still not sure yet about global warming. Well, it's tough to argue with the data. And there's a graph. It's the last 100 years of average temperatures on the planet. I think even Hannah at eight years old would be able to spot the trend. There's another higher road math required to see the trend here. The world is warming up. Where there might be debate is about what's causing the world to warm up. One volcano blowing up puts more carbon dioxide in the air than all of the world's cars in 10 years. So there is some debate about what's causing it. To be honest, it doesn't matter what's causing it. It's happening. And so we must respond. There is also debate about what we must do to respond. But that I will leave for another time. Look, there's lots of science around this. I'm not going to go into detail. This is not an Al Gore presentation. If you want an inconvenient truth, I think uh, you can go and get the video. It was well done. But if the science wouldn't prove anything to you anyway, I, I think this is the best proof I've seen so far that global warming is happening. <laughs> Can't argue with that, really. And I know some people who would say, well, what's the problem? But anyway, we will move on. Of course, there are other issues, and I've kind of alluded to this. There's a group of scientists called the Copenhagen Consensus, and they are listing all the major problems. Global warming is one of those, but there are huge other issues to deal with. And each one of these could be a workshop on their own. It, it's beyond the, what we are trying to do today. So I'm not going to go into detail on these other things. I'm going to focus in on energy for a few reasons. First of all, it is the headline topic when we look at sustainability and what we need to do to create a better planet to live in. It's a sort of media darling, if you like. It is also, in fact, one of the easiest to deal with. 
in terms of reducing your energy use. And the great thing about it, which I hope you'll see, is that if you reduce your energy usage, you will see the savings in your bank account within 30 days. So this is not something where we're going to reduce our energy usage so that Bangladesh won't be flooded in the year 2111. That is also true, but if you do something about your energy usage today, you will pay less electricity or gas or whatever energy you use at the end of the month. 